Hello, everybody, all the Metagrid users around the world. It's me, Paul, back again from his studio based in Warsaw, Poland. I hope you're doing good. I am. My hand is better, my plaster is off. But that's not what I want to talk about, actually. Today, I would like to take a deeper look into Metagrid Macros, a really, really powerful and interesting tool. Let's get into it. You're probably quite familiar with the idea of macros, right? Just in case if you're not, macros are the combinations of key shortcuts and commands coming in a row, just one after another, so they create powerful combinations for your more complicated tasks and chains of commands you need to perform. I'm using them every day. I love my Metagrid doing them for me, and I have uh, some of them designed here. So maybe let's start with just two macros I already have, so that you're gonna see how they work and what they do. That's my main Metagrid screen for Nuendo. And the macro I would like to present to you is actually here in the section for Isotope RX operations. I use Isotope RX on an everyday basis. It's one of my key tools when dialogue editing, for example. And yeah, he comes also one of my favorite and most important macros. What this macro does, take a look, is that you select a portion of sound, and you can send it to so-called Isotope Connect, which sends it further to my Isotope Editor. And here it goes. Did you see that? This is like really in a blink of an eye. This is super fast, believe me. And yeah, you are going to believe me when I show you what should I do to get this result I got in like less than two seconds when I did this without using a macro. Take a look. The first thing, of course, is that I have to select a portion of sound I need to send to my RX Connect. The next thing is Control-Alt-Shift-1, which is my window for RX Connect for a selected clip. Then, of course, I'm going to apply this and send it to RX. And there we go. Yeah, it's not the most convenient way, I have to tell you. And this simple macro lets me do it really faster. Take a look again. I totally prefer it this way. What I do here is that I have two actions in a row. First one is Control Alt Shift plus one for my RX Connect window. And then I've got a shortcut for this button called Apply. And this is Control Return. This is kind of a more complicated one. And it lets me initialize my track presets for my instruments as well as for my audio tracks. And it goes like this, of course, with just one press of a button. Here it goes. This is my fully fledged track preset with the VST of my uh, choice, also with inserts of my choice, with signal routing of my choice, etc., etc. It's a great feature of Nuendo and Cubase, I think, track presets, but just calling them up, making them appear on the timeline in your window is not actually that easy because if, again, I wanted to make it fully manual, that would go like this. I would have to press Control alt p for my track presets window. Then I'm going to press Tab three times, so I'm in the box for writing a name of my desired instrument. Then I have to write Virus Ti, and I'm going to navigate with mouse or with my Tab again. So let's make it like Tab, and let's press Enter. There's a much easier way for this, and this is Metagrid Macro. Take a look. It starts with Control-Alt-P, as you know from the previous try, to call up my Track Presets window. This is the shortcut. Then I press Tab three times, and as I did before. Then I write, type a text, Virus Ti. I press Tab again. Still, I have to wait two seconds, so it's not too fast for my new window. And then I press Enter. 
and there it goes on my timeline. Let's try to see this again. Hmm, yeah, and these are some of my macros I'm using on an everyday basis, but you know what? I feel like creating a new one for my cycle markers. I would like to create cycle markers also in a row, like a sequence of them. It is possible in Nuendo, but I want to automate this process so it's faster and it's just right away at my very one press of the button. I'm going to use it mainly for my computer game audio and I'll show you how and why just right now. Let's suppose that these are the dialogues for a computer game and these are some short like parts or short dialogue parts I'm going to export. Seven parts of dialogue. And now to create cycle markers. I'm going to click the clip, press P, cycle marker. Click P, cycle marker. Click P, cycle marker, etc., etc., until I reach the very end of my selection. But you know what? I'm quite sure I can speed it up and make it more efficient with my Metagrid. For now, my add cycle button consists only of just insert cycle marker action. I'm gonna expand this into a macro. I'm having a clip here. Let's get closer to this clip with my cursor. Now I can select an event under cursor and I have control alt shift and equation for this. Now this thing on my timeline, this clip is selected. Then I press P to make a region exactly here and then I create a cycle marker. Then pressing N goes to the end of the clip and pressing N goes to the start of the second clip when I can when I can press this control alt shift equation again I can press P I can create a cycle marker yes exactly so it's gonna be repetitive it's gonna be a sequence of actions right so <laughs> let's try let's press N here control alt shift equation I should have Made it more simple, like an easier shortcut, maybe. Mm, yeah. And then I press P to make a region, a short region uh, on, my, on my selected clip. Yeah, now I create a cycle marker and then I press N again. Guys, that should be it. I suppose it might be too quick for Nuendo at some point, so I'm not sure if it's going to work because pr I, I have a feeling that I might use a second or two seconds pause somewhere in this macro, but let's see how it goes right now. Fine. Ah, you see? It repeats itself. It's, it skips the clips properly, but it does not move the region here like this violet one. So probably I know where the pause is going to be needed. And I'm going to use it before making this short region on my, on my timeline. And I think that's going to help now. Mm, okay, let's see how this macro performs now. Ah, uh, yeah. Exactly, the pause helped. Yeah, so please welcome my new macro on my right tablet. And again, if I wanted to make it manual, that would go like this. So just to compare if it's really efficient and better. Yes, it is. And this macro is going to stay with me. And I'm happy that you just witnessed a new macro being born on my iPad. Let's sum the things up. Do you remember when I told you that the day I started using Metagrid was actually the day that changed the way I work completely? That was kind of a short yet detailed example why that is so true. You could see me creating my macro, you could see me using my macros. I've got more of them and all of them are powerful, all of them save me 
a lot of time and let me do some really advanced and cool stuff in my new window. I wish you the same. Do cool stuff with your MetaGrid and stay creative, stay safe. I'm gonna see you soon with more MetaGrid goodies. Cheers. <laughs>